Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy HMSA Turn 12 here back at it again. And this time I'm actually gonna be showing you guys replays of the first two weeks of the Ultimate Battle League, sponsored by the Facebook group, the Pokemon Battle and Trade Community. So the Inglewood Infestation, which is me, will be in this round. We'll, we're taking on the Stuttgart High Jump Kickers. And I'm rocking with the <clears throat> with the six of the most com competent Pokemon, or so I thought, uh, with the leftover Swampert, leftover defensive Swampert, um, Life Orb, Middle King, um, Bloom Doom, Volcarona, Mega Low Bunny, of course, leftover Rotom, Defogger, and Scarf Exedrill. And looking at his team, there was a possibility that I could have won. And you're going to see how I kind of messed up on a few things and kind of didn't really expect some of the mods of his choice. So uh, let's get right to it. So he leads off with the Zerky Tree and he, I lead off with the Swampert because I think it'd be the best play. I actually go into Excadrill scouting the energy ball because I figured that he would do that. I get a crit here, but to me, it almost felt like this thing was either was Choice Specs or Scarf. So nonetheless, I predict him going to the Pout on just go for the Taku just to get some chip damage off of this bulky mon. Well, my, my ideal plan here was to just chip off the bulky parts of his po a team first, which obviously is the Vaporeon and the Hippowdon. So if I was to get rid of those two out of the way, my Mega Lopunny would have came in as really clutch at this time. So anyways, let's get right back to it. Hippowdon's already at taking 18%. I'm getting the Defog off of here. He goes for the Toxic and unfortunately misses. Now here, I was really thinking about Volt Switching here. I was expecting to go to the Vaporeon because I was thinking he probably would Toxic here again. I go for the Hydro Pump, it's the safest play. No setbacks with that. And so, you know, I fire off the will o here just so I can cancel any health that the Vaporeon has if it had Leftovers. But then I realized that it didn't have Leftovers. And it's not a Z user because it, it's not a Z captain. So I was thinking, man, what kind of Vaporeon is this? It used Wish, so it's not a choice item. So, and I was thinking, hmm, maybe it's actually a Wakan Berry. Or the, I was thinking it's probably the, the Wakan Berry, which is the one that deals half of, from a special attack, electric type move. So, unless I keep going, he goes to the Zerka Tree predicting my Swamper. I go back to my little Corona predicting him to go into the Energy Ball. And here's where I have the perfect opportunity to set up a Quiver Dance. Just get that nice, delicious, nutritious <clears throat> speed up. Go to the Meta Jam here. I go for the Flamethrower, and this is where things really went bad for me because I was expecting the Flamethrower to knock out the Meta Jam. And so my issue with that play <clears throat> is that I think it probably would have been best if I had brought the Fire Blast. If I brought Fire Blast, obviously this Meta Jam drops dead. Um... But yeah, unfortunately, it didn't knock out the Metacham, and my thing with that is that if I would have killed Metacham, he probably would have gone to the Vaporeon baiting with his berry, which, you, which I found out later it's actually the grass reducing berry. Um, Zerka Tree would get outsped and get blown back by, by, by the Z-move, I popped it right there. And it can't really hit me outside of a discharge and potential paralysis. Um, Locephalon would have um, dropped dead, I think, because I also have Rock a Psychic, and I think a plus one Psychic is like an 82 to a 96% chance of knocking it out. Locephalon is really fragile. If he brings a hit Powered on, I probably would have just bloomed it as well. And Weavile, um, depending on what set it was, I probably would have, you know, I would KO it. <laughs> So, fortunately that happens, he goes into the hit power down right here, and I'm like, you know what, the meta champ's weakened already, so I'm just gonna fire off a power up punch so I can get some attack drops right here, attack increases here. So here, I'm actually gonna go for the frustration here, and it does 41%, and here's where I kind of misplayed as well, and Mia, I got a bit greedy here, and I actually go for the power, <laughs> I actually ended up going for the power up punch here. I thought I was gonna kill the hit power down because I did some calcs here, but fortunately, I lived on one HP. And I'm just taking unnecessary damage from the sand and from the toxic. So I fire off the frustration, knock out the Hippowdon. Perfect fine with me here. Um, but now my little bunny is unnecessarily weakened to the point where I'm going to lose this game because of a Zerka tree. So he goes for the energy ball here. I sack the extra because I don't need extra draw anymore at this point in the game. Um, I go into the Needle King. I think he expected me to be Scarf. That's why I switched out. But I go for the Sludge Wave. That does 37 to the Vaporeon. Luckily for me, with the burn, the Thunderbolt will be able to knock out the Vaporeon. So now it comes down to our final four mons on our side of the team. So I stay in the Needle King. 
I expected him to actually knock off here, but he went for the Icicle Crash. And here I messed up again, because here I should have just gone into Rotom. Because I find out in this turn that he actually is just Scarf, which means Rotom could have done a lot better. And at this point, this game is already over because I can't do anything to the rest of this team. And even if I could, the Zerg Tree pretty much sweeps me with the Energy Ball. So I just get a Brox up and everything. I'm just doing some bad plays. Already at this point, I already conceded defeat. So keep going. Crash. I get flinched. Miss the Hydro Pump, I think. Die, dead, dead. And that's the end of the game. So I think the turning point, the, a lot of, I lost all my momentum where when I lost my Volcarona Corona to the Metachan. If Metachan would have died, he would, I think he would have been forced to bring in Vaporeon. I would have popped the Z-move on it, take out its mysterious item. And even if the Vaporeon had Roar, I pretty much would have had control in the game because Nidoking King would just come in and claim a kill, regardless of what's in front of it. Um, rocks are up, which meant that Metachan would die from come, incoming Stealth Rocks. So it would have been a really <clears throat> um, good momentum in my game, knocking out the Metachan. And my Volk would have been safe, and then Blacephalon um, would only be the biggest um, factor. And so, and if I would have kept, I would have been able to kept the Scarf X Drill just to knock out the rest of his team out. So, anyways, that was a good game. Um, yeah, just the Volcarona dying early didn't really help me out at all. So on to the next game. Um, so now, being down one no early in the early in the season doesn't really mean much to me. Um, but being down 0-2 really does. And so, I had to step my game up a bit. <laughs> I didn't make any transactions yet at this point in time. So, I was rocking the same team, except for one crucial substitution of Rotom Wash to be taken out and incoming to the Blade. So, the team I'm rocking with here is uh, Buggy MZ Volcarona, uh, Suicide Lead Excadrill, Assault Vest Swampert, uh, if I like the Blade. Because what else would it be running? Uh, Mega Lopunny, of course, and Scarf Needle King. So looking at his team, I'm looking at the roster that he had. His team was actually kind of fast in terms of speed. You have 328 max speed Mew, 423 max speed Zerora. Um, Titar is like two. I want to say 240, 263 max, but with Scarf, it's like at 360, 390. I, I keep forgetting the speed tier of Titar. Stat 1 is 284 max speed, but if it's adamant, it's like around 250 something. And with Sand up, because it most likely will have Sand Rush, it's going to be a Sand Sweeper. Uh, Landris is at 331, 311 fire member correctly. Still fast with Choice Scarf, and Crobat, of course, 394 max speed. So he had a really fast, fast team. <clears throat> so my game plan was I cannot lose to Stat 1. I have nothing for Stat 1 outside of two Pokemon on my roster. It's Cofagrius and my Double Blade. And I chose I ended up choosing the Blade because the Blade actually can take hits from Titar and from Zerora while not losing out to, to you know not losing out to Stoutland. So <clears throat> you're about to see what kind of um, you know you're about to see how, how how much of an impact the blade gives to the team. So let's get right to it. So he leads off with the Landris, a little bit extra drill here. And he goes for the knockoff here, which is perfectly fine with me. But he reveals on the first, very first turn that he took damage from Life Orb. So that means it's not Scarf. And one of my biggest issues in team building is that if Landris was Scarf, we're going to have a speed tier problem against his team. But luckily for me that he showed the Life Orb early. And that way I'm not inclined to be like, oh yeah, okay, you know what? I know what this guy's up to, you know. <clears throat> I'm fine with that. I get my rocks up just to start pressuring his team early on in the game because they'll chip away the Crobat, the Stoutland, you know, all those mons. So he fires off an Earthquake again, and he's just weakening his Landris. Now, I would have rocked Earth Power with Landris if I was you, but whatever. He fires off a Grass Knot. Again, taking more chip damage, and that did nothing. <laughs> that big body Swampert, man. And Swampert here, I wasn't expecting him to do much, but he ended up getting a kill here against a Landris of all things. So, pretty good so far. Now, I stay in expecting this Crobat to defog, and you know what? I'm just going to get with hit with the Ice Punch and do 48%. Now, the reason why I didn't Ice Punch the Landris Eye was that I was expecting him to go into Titar or into Mew or Zero Aura, and I wanted to get a burn off of something as much as I possibly can. I just wanted to get a burn, just get my game of my own chance. It's still pretty early in the game, so I don't need to make crazy plays right now. So I go for the Brave Bird. He goes for the Brave Bird here. 
That's on my Swampert. And you know what? I think it's time to evolve my Megalo Bunny uh, to, you know, whatever. And then hit the Frustration and knock out that Crobat. And phew. So this was a very questionable play here on my opponent's part. I go for the Dream Punt and just knock out this T-Tar. Now, I have a few issues about that play. To me, it seemed weird. I was like, why are you baiting me? I, like, I was thinking about it too, and I was like, hmm. There's no way a T-Tar is going to live a Drain Punch on without any special, I mean, I'm sorry, with any attack uh, increase or drops. So my issue is why he did it. So I was thinking most likely he was trying to set up, more likely the obvious reason that he's trying to set up the Sand for Stoutland. But my issue with that was that he should have just gone into Mew. Because I'm pretty sure Mew can take hits from, from Frustrations of Low Bunny. Zero Aura is faster than me, so it can threaten me out with close combat or even Plasma Fist. Um, obviously, you're not going to bring in Stoutland because it's not fast enough. And even if the T-Tar was Scarf, there's no way a T-Tar max speed Scarf isn't going to is gonna ever outpace my low bunny. It never will. I already did the calc. I mean, the speed tier is already embedded in my brain, so there's no way it can outspeed a low bunny. So for him, I would have just gone into the Mew. Which would have put me in a weird situation as well. But nonetheless, let's continue it off. So I ended up with the low bunny. Now it's Stoutland. Obviously, I'm going to bring in my bad, bad boy, the blade right here. Predicting him to go to superpower or return. Most likely, this Stoutland is banded, so that's why I stayed in. And I decided to go for a substitute here. And the thing is that I'm not taking any chip from Sandstorm, and Zora is. So the Shadow Sneak here, I'm not in attack invested. So. It's just going to chip away the Zorora. I'm just right here at this point in time. I just want to chip away the Zorora so that my low bunny can start doing some big boy damage here. So now he expects me to Shadow Sneak again. He goes to Stoutland. And this is a very another questionable play here. I mean, he doesn't have much he can do here because this the blade is going to do a lot more work than it does. You can see that Gyro Ball did 54. Uninvested attack, by the way. And I'm Gyro Ball this again and just knock this thing out. And the blade picks up its first kill this season. I go for a Shadow Sneak one more time. And this Aurora has Volt Switch. So I'm thinking this Aurora must be... It's not Life Orb. It might be Extra Belt. <laughs> or something. So I, I'm faster than the Mew. Which I find it pretty funny. And just Savage Spin off this. And knock this thing out of the park. And now it comes down to this Aurora. But luckily with Volcarona. It has higher defense that. It's actually a bulkier version of Volcarona. I get the burn off his Aurora. Means you can't do anything else to the rest of my team. And just hit it up with a Bug Buzz. And win the game from there. So yeah, that was a pretty interesting match, although my opponent kind of misplayed it with the T-Tar. But nonetheless, we'll take those wins. We're in 1-1. And speaking about this match, this match is actually a division match, which if you guys know sports at all, division matches are just as important as any other match because those are where the tiebreakers come from and all that kind of good stuff. And trying to get divisional titles before we head to the playoffs. So yeah, so our next two matches weeks three and four will be all divisional matches so it'll be interesting to see what happens there and yeah um you know hopefully we get to get more wins so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed a like and subscribe for more content have a good day